everyone, Antonia here, and I'm so excited as you can tell by the title. This is my first trimester uh, baby update. Um, it's actually my first ever uh, baby update, and so I'm so excited to share with you guys what's been happening all trimester. I promise you I've been trying to make a first trimester video or like a six week video then I said no I'm gonna do it at eight weeks and then ten weeks and I've just been so exhausted so tired I've had so many symptoms that's just drained me but we're gonna get into that later so I have here the baby center app so at 13 weeks they say between 12 and 14 weeks, you're ending your first trimester and going into your second trimester. So um, I guess that's what kind of motivated me to get this video started because I didn't want to go into my second trimester without telling you guys everything that happened in my first trimester. So 13 weeks. What's going on at 13 weeks? Fingerprints are forming on your baby's tiny fingertips her, his or her veins and organs are clearly visible through her still thin skin and her body or his body is starting to catch up with her head which makes up just a third of her body size now. If you're having a girl, she now has more than two million, two million eggs in her ovaries. Your baby is almost three inches long, about the size of a pea pod and weighs nearly an ounce. Nice. Next week marks the beginning of your second trimester, a time of relative comfort for the many women who see early pregnancy symptoms such as morning sickness and fatigue subside. I hope it really does subside. More good news. Many women also notice a distinct, a distinct increase in their sex drive around this time. Okay. Birth is still months away, but your breasts may have already started. Colostrum, the nutrient-rich fluid that feeds your baby for the first few days after birth before your milk starts to flow. So that is it. I remember last week, I think they said, when I checked, the baby was the size of a small plum, so now it's like the size of a pea pod. So exciting. So let's get into what's been going on uh, throughout this first trimester and how we got pregnant because as many of you guys don't know, obviously because it's my first video, um, we've had a very long infertility journey, almost three years of infertility and um, something just snapped and um, this is probably going to be my longest baby update video but I'm going to try to make it as short as I can with telling everything but not like going too much into detail just enough information for you guys about how we got pregnant and then everything that's been going on in the first 12 13 weeks and then I'll try to update you guys every week or two weeks depending on how I'm feeling <laughs> so just a quick backstory of our infertility journey a couple years ago um, after we got married, as soon as we got married, we wanted to, we got married three years ago, a little over three years ago, and we said we wanted to go ahead and start the baby making process right away, and, um, we've never tried, we're young, I'm currently 28, but I'm going to be 29 at the end of this month, and three years ago, I would have been, what? 25 going on 26 and so if I have that correctly yeah so um, we're like we're young shouldn't have an issue right doesn't matter um, so after about six months or so we went to the doctor and we're like well we've been trying we've been trying nothing's happening and then the doctor was like well it could be my weight and um, I was overweight but I wasn't like like I've seen people bigger, and I know you can't compare everybody to yourself, but um, my weight, I mean, I've always been overweight my whole life, I felt, and um, my periods were always normal and everything. 
Um, but after like a year or so, I think I got even more stressed out and depressed with work. I was doing grad school, chair coach, teaching, and I gained even more weight, um, which led me to about like last year when I was like at my biggest weight and my hormones were out of whack, my periods were irregular, going on for like months on. I have anemia. Well, I've always been slightly anemic ever since I was a little girl, but it got really, really bad to where I had to get blood transfusions. It was really bad. So I just had to do like a turnaround and like a mental, I had to have a mental break. I had to have a social emotional break, everything just from life. And um, at the beginning of this year, I was just like, I'm not gonna go through all that. So I quit my job. <laughs> just for about six months, I stopped teaching. Um, I traveled more. I focused on losing weight, focused on eating healthy. And um, my period started going back regular. Um, my tests, my overall health tests and everything were getting better, so all that to say that, okay, fast forward a little bit towards like around June to August, I'm like, okay, everything's better now, right? I lost weight, the doctor said it was because of weight, my hormones are better, my, um, I'm not, no longer pre-diabetic, anything like that, so I should be able to have a baby now. So again, I mean, even through all this, we were still trying because we kept praying and just hoping some sort of miracle would happen. Nothing happened. Everything was fine, but nothing happened. And then we went to a fertility doctor. We got the treatment with the Clomid. Um, we did one treatment and didn't work. So started back teaching in August of this year. And I didn't want to have to leave work because of the Clomid treatments, you have to be seen a number of times and I didn't want to have to keep leaving work for them to check on different things um, dealing with you know my private area so um, I was like well I guess I'm never gonna have a baby okay so then I was talking to one of my teacher friends and I was telling her about my infertility journey like I do with a lot of teacher people because you never know who you could come in contact with who may know something. Anyways, her mom is one of those natural doctors um, and have a lot of patients with infertility and she was telling me about this pill called Vitex and that I should try it. So, um, also let me rewind a little bit. When I went back, when I was going to the fertility doctor, I was also like testing when my period came at home, I was also checking my ovulation, I was checking um, everything that you're supposed to be checking to make sure you get pregnant. So I told the fertility specialist that I was not ovulating based on the at-home ovulation test and all that, and she was like, oh, well, you know, sometimes those don't work, yada, yada, yada. Anyways, so the, this, this was like about a month later, I think like around September, October, like late September, and so um, I started taking the Vitex. It was only like $8 at GNC, whatever. I was like, $8, I'd have to go to the doctor. I'd have to take off work. Let's see if this works. So I tried it, tested my ovulation, and the ovulation test kits actually came up positive around the time that I know that I was supposed to be ovulating. Um, so I was like, hmm, this actually could work. So. We baby danced around the time that we had the highest peak of the ovulation kits. Um, and I did use the dollar store ovulation kit, but I also used the, uh, what is it, what is it? I'll put it down below when I remember. It's a very popular brand. I'm just having a brain fart right now. But, so we used that and then Two weeks later, oh, we also used bromelain because I was doing a lot of research at home because I'm like, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to go full force. So I heard of um, other people on YouTube as well as on 
Google and all that. And you know, the doctors are always telling you, don't go to Google, don't listen to Google, or whatever. But Google actually helped me this time. I did my research on Vitex. I did my research on the bromelain, which you're supposed to take after um, day one of ovulation, like day one through five of ovulation. I did that, which is like the pine. Bromelain is like a pineapple extract pill. So I did that. And then I waited in that two weeks, the first week after, um, you know, I started having really bad cramps in my foot. Like at one time I felt like my foot was broken. I couldn't walk on it. So I had to call my husband. I said, we gotta go to the emergency room because my foot is hurting me. And in the back of my head, I kept thinking I'm pregnant, I'm pregnant. Like this never happened to me, I'm pregnant. So we went to the emergency room. The doctor was like, um, we're gonna do some x-rays, we're gonna do some blood work, urine tests, whatever the case may be. So, did the whole blood work, x-ray, everything came back good, the urine test, and I was telling him, I was telling the doctor, I think I'm pregnant, and they were like, well, Miss Gates, we did the urine test, and according to that, you're not pregnant, so I was like, okay, you'll see, and I'm telling my husband, everybody's looking at me like I'm crazy. But I know my body, I know, what was going on in my head. I mean, even the Sunday before, I had went to church with my mom and my husband and we went down to the altar, we prayed. I said, I no longer have infertility. I was just done speaking like negativity over my life about this infertility. My New Year's resolution, one of them was to get healthy and to be ready to have a baby. And I said, it's the end of the year, but the year is not over and I'm not giving up. So anyways, a week later that, a week later, it was like the first week in October, bought a couple of pregnancy tests, took one on Tuesday, I think it was like October 2nd, and had like a really, really faint light. Well, it was so faint, like I didn't even know if I was pregnant, but I still thought I was because I'm like, I never seen that before. So it's like, okay. Then Thursday comes around, my husband's watching a Patriots game because that's his favorite team. And then um, while he's watching the game, I go in the bathroom and I was like, let me just take a test because we have to go to Austin the next day and I didn't want to have to go through that because it's already been the two week period. I was like, let me just take the test. Took the test, showed it to him, he was shocked. I was not shocked because I already knew that it was gonna happen. And um, he was like, is that somebody else's stick? Like, show me another stick or whatever. If I have, I think I made a video, I may put it on here, put the, on here. If the video is not too long, then I'll put it on another video, but anyway. So, yeah. Took another test to show him that it was my urine on that test, and then he was just so happy. And then, it hit me. All this stuff started happening. Also, I do want to mention that I continue to take the Vitex throughout the first trimester. But it said to take three pills, but I started just taking two. I lowered my dosage. I did have a little bit of side effects with the Vitex. I was irritated a little bit more, a little bit more emotional. And um, after a while, I just blamed it on the pregnancy because I was, oh my gosh, the first six weeks boob pain i had morning sickness for like a whole week like around week three and four i had morning sickness can't remember it was week three or four i had morning sickness that whole week every morning but it wasn't like really bad i just felt nauseous i didn't actually throw up i didn't it didn't go on all day it was just for like a good 30 minutes or so after i woke up so that's another thing how i knew for sure like I'm pregnant, it's never happened to me before, told y'all. And then my students kind of started noticing changes in me too. I teach high schoolers and they're like, Miss Gates, like what's going on with you lately? You're just so irritated with everything. And I really was like, I had the, sh I still have the shortest fees. Every little thing would just bother me. I'm a pretty easy going teacher, but they, like every little thing would just bother me. And the exhaustion, this whole first trimester was horrible. Like I didn't want to get up of bed. I didn't want to get out of bed. I had Harvey by me everything. Um, he's like cleaning up everything. 
at school, I sit down and teach. The exhaustion is just really, really bad. I don't want to get up and go anywhere, even shopping, and I love shopping. Nothing, I don't want to do it. Today I had to like kind of take a shower, breathe, and then say, okay, I'm gonna come shoot this video because I wanna let everybody know my journey. Because I think it's good to hear other people's journey because um, not everyone's journey is the same and hopefully I can give hope to somebody out there who may feel like, you know, I have infertility, and it's never gonna happen. Well, it happened for us, so I'm pretty sure it can happen for you. And Vitex may have been the reason, or it may not have been the reason, but um, start ovulating, I don't know. We got pregnant, so. And I have heard that it hasn't worked for everyone too, so. But, what else happened? Oh, I also did have some bleeding issues around the week of Thanksgiving, which I would say is like 10 weeks, we had some bleeding issues and um, went to the emergency room, found out everything was okay. And then two weeks out, no, was it a week? A week after that, when I got back to school, I started bleeding again because I was yelling at the students so bad I, like I said, I get irritated easily now. I got so irritated, I was yelling. I just tired myself out from yelling so much. And then next thing you know, I just sat there like this. So I was just so tired from yelling and everything. I sat back and then I was like, I need to use the bathroom. I went to use the bathroom and I started bleeding. Sorry, this is TMI, but I had blood clots and all that stuff. So I called the doctor. No, I emailed the doctor and they were like, you need to come in. So I told my boss and they were like, you can leave early or whatever if you need to go because we want to make sure everything's okay with the baby. That's another thing. My job is so supportive of this because they know my infertility journey as well. Um, so went, did an ultrasound, did blood work, everything was fine. Everything was fine. They did say I had bleeding around the uterus. I'm then around the, around the placenta, and they said that my placenta was sitting right on top of my cervix so that I need to have pelvic rest, so, um, which I never really, mainly they said no intercourse, no intercourse, which to be honest, we weren't having intercourse, but they said that within the next few weeks since I'm going into the second trimester that the placenta should move up. I don't, I, ha I mean, I know everyone's pregnancy is different, but my husband was, and I are like, okay, when am I gonna get a belly already? Like, I already have like a little belly. I've always been like a little chunky in the midsection, but I still don't see like a baby bump yet. It's just like a regular chunky belly that I have. So hopefully in the next couple of weeks, we see some. And I'll show you guys my belly at the end. So also I wanna mention we did do genetic testing to test for like Down syndrome or any other one of those syndromes. And the tests all came out negative and we did test for the gender. And the doctor told my husband the gender, but I don't know it yet. So we're gonna do a gender reveal soon and um, I'll also record that and show you guys. And I guess I'll let you guys know what I think it is. I think it's a boy because I had a dream that, <coughs> and I'm still not sure if I had a dream if I just woke up thinking in my head it's a boy <clears throat> but we were on vacation in Orlando back in October and the hotel I just got up out of bed and I said it's a boy <coughs> I don't know what made me say that but then I had another dream that I delivered a baby and it was a girl so we'll see I think it's a boy I've only been craving salty stuff I'm normally a big sweet tooth person and I haven't been eating a lot of sweets all I want is salt 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 um, my mouth's also been super dry. My skin's been super dry. Um, and I've been eating like a horse. And when I'm hungry, I'm hungry. Like I'm hangry. Like you have to get me food now because I feel like I haven't eaten in like months or years or whatever. It's crazy. But my husband's been very supportive and whatever I've been asking for, he's been getting it for me, so. 
thank God for that. So yeah, that's all that's pretty much been happening this first trimester. If I miss out anything, I'll update it in the next video. This video is already super long. And um, I did get a pregnancy journal because it's my first pregnancy. I did get a pregnancy journal. So I'll let you guys see. Um, maybe I'll make a video about that pregnancy journal and show you guys like how I use it. I did order from Etsy. And I also did order one of those um, things from Etsy where you take pictures in front of every week to show like how many weeks you are, what mommy's craving, what daddy's thinking about, all that stuff. I thought it would be cool once I start having a belly. Speaking of belly, let's show you guys my belly shot. Okay, so here's just it's cold outside, so I'm wearing my regular sweater. Do a whole 360 view. Okay, this is the front of my belly with a tank top on. This is the side. I'll lift it up to show you. I'm wearing leggings. I don't know if this chair is like messing up the view, but yeah. I just, this is just my normal belly, like, I've always had like a little pouch, so. 13 weeks and two days. So we just came out the doctor's office for my 12 week checkup and the doctor told, we got our genetic testing results, everything's fine, everything came back negative in terms of like downs or anything like that. But um, we also found out the sex. Well, he knows the sex and I don't know. So I'm anxious. He has all the power right now. I have now. all the power. I'm not saying nothing. So um, I tried asking like, you know, were you happy about it or whatever? But he was being very Solid poker face. Rock here. So um, I guess I'll find out in the gender reveal. whenever right. that is, maybe in the next month or two. <laughs> but yeah. It was a very good appointment. Good appointment. See y'all next time. So that is my first trimester pregnancy update. And I'm not going to do it by trimesters, obviously, from now on. My next one is probably going to be my 14 week and then I'll probably do the gender reveal and maybe do like 16 weeks and I don't know if I want to do every two weeks or one week but if you'd like to follow along on my journey feel free to subscribe or just give this video a thumbs up whatever works for you. I'm excited first pregnancy um, can't wait till the baby gets here already. And I, I'm even more excited to figure out what the baby is, if it's a boy or a girl, so we can start getting prepared. Alright, see you guys in my next video. Bye.